don't know what I'm doing here. Hold on. I'm trying to get it together, guys. <laughs> All right, so now I just need to turn it back around for me. Why do we have that up here? Hold on, guys. Where is this that I have up here? Bear with me, guys. There is something. Could somebody write and tell me if they see this thing on my screen? Like, I don't know. I see something on my screen that says yes or no. I don't freaking know what's going on. I might have to live up and come back on, guys. not there anymore because all right I, I i really today i'm having a rough day as you can see but i'm still trying to keep it moving i have a great word for y'all right now is it there now cuz cuz i see it again i don't know why is that there cuz tell me if you see it again No? All right. I see it, but who cares? As long as y'all can hear me. I ain't, trying, I ain't trying to be seen. I'm trying to be heard. <laughs> All right. I'm trying something different, and I'm not at the table. Um, I'm trying to sit down with y'all. Do I look cricket? But I don't know. I'm just having so many technical difficulties. Oh, I love you, Cuzzo. All right. I really don't know why I see that, but you said we good, so we good. All right. Let me see if it's going to let me be great before I come over here. I'm so sorry. Usually, I know I be, like, ready, but, hey, it gives people time to come on, so. I love you more, boo-boo. All right. So, I have a great worry for y'all. Today, I have been having a fun day because I'm not going to give it no entertainment, you know, entertaining the day. But I guess I'm being impressed about what I'm coming forth to talk about, about keep digging, meaning just keep pursuing and keep going no matter what. Because the whole objective is the devil be wanting you to stop. He's trying to derail you. He's trying to frustrate you so you can stop. And if I quit now, then that really makes me a loser because I came too far to quit. So I'm just going to keep pressing. I know in my heart that this is my calling. I know in my heart that this is what I was called to do. He told me to write that book. He told me to go in this direction. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rebuke every spirit right now in the mighty name of Jesus that's trying to come against this word. I rebuke every spirit. I rebuke every demon. I rebuke every rich, every warlock in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that there will be no hindrance in this recording. There will be no hindrance in my voice. There will be no hindrance on the other side of whoever is watching this, that they will be able to receive this word in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Holy Spirit come and overflow this atmosphere. Amen. <laughs> That's how you do that, boy. All right, so share this, guys. Um, um amen. Amen, sis. <laughs> All right, so um, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm gonna let me bring it a little closer. All right, boom. That's good. All right, so as those can see, I have on my I Pray to Say t-shirt off the shoulder, one of my favorites. If you have not got this shirt and you claim you a queen that you pray to slay, you need to support your sister. Yes, you need to support me. Small businesses matter, okay? Especially if you're getting fed. If you feel like um, I'm blessing you with the word, support me. Get your shirt. I also have it in black, v-neck, and in purple. 
okay? I pray to slay. Those that have not got my book, the let go. I'm This book is bomb, y'all. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it, but I'm just, I feel like I'm a person that I bring forth quality. Whenever I bring forth a word, it's from the Holy Ghost. Um, you know, the Lord leads me. It's spirit and truth. Whatever I bring forth a product, it is good. Down to these t-shirts, they're great products. This book is amazing. It's my story. Um, when I wrote it, I felt the Holy Spirit. I felt the presence of God there. I shared some things that I probably would have never shared in my life, but I know that it will benefit you. Um, we have scriptures in there. It's not long. It's about maybe 60 something pages. This book will bless you. FallonBrownPublishing.com. Description and the link is in the title right there. Okay. So that's enough with that. Um, hope you guys can see me and can hear me. Let's just go straight into this word. So when I was Bible studying with my children, we, um, we try to Bible study every Sunday Aw, thank you, baby. Thank you, sis. That's what I'm talking about. Sisters supporting one another. So, okay. Um, back to business, right? So when I was Bible studying with my children, please share this. This is gonna bless someone. Um, this story came back to me. And it was so funny because years ago when I was reading um inside Genesis, because I try to always come back. I don't care how many times you read a scripture, a verse, you know, you always want to revisit that because the word is a, is living. Though this, though this might be paper, these are living words, and they come to life to you. And the, the more that you mature in your walk with God, the more that you will find the same scriptures that you read even yesterday, you'll go back and read it today, and you'll be like, wow, I didn't get that. I, I, I you know, that's just hitting me. And um, that's kind of what it happened to me. It was like an aha moment. And it was so funny because... Um, prior to that, I was laying in my bed and the scripture just came to me. I couldn't remember the exact scripture, but the formality of the scripture, how, um, Isaac, let me see, how Isaac and his servants was digging the well and how they had all these, um, complications digging the well, but he kept going. And I don't know, it just came in my spirit. And I was like, you know, the power of just keep going, the power of just keep going. And I was like, I want to share that. I want to share that with my sisters and my brothers because I know in my heart that when you say yes to God or when you say yes to a dream and you go after that dream, it's like all hell, you know, rages against you. I was having some difficulties today with um, certain things that I'm doing on my blog with the advertisement. I have certain ads, but it wasn't the, it's not the exact ads that I wanted. And I was sitting there trying to get things done. And my daughter just kept saying, she was like, oh my gosh, like, why won't it let you be great? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I feel like every time I keep moving forward to something, I feel like you know, there's something trying to stagnate me. And th the things about people that you admire and that people that you see, they keep going. Like, no matter what happens, hey, Lisa, no matter what happens, they keep going. They don't, they don't let nothing hinder them. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, boom, God, you told me to do the I Pray to Slay t-shirts. You told me to write the book. You told me to start the whole Pray to Slay movement. Even when I had the app, I was paying for that app out of my own money. And as a businesswoman, I felt like it wasn't the appropriate thing to do because I feel like you shouldn't bring on, you know, any liabilities. But at the same time, I was like, you know, this is an asset into someone's life. So I was so deceived. And next thing you know, it was just getting too much for me financially. And I couldn't do the app no more. And then we was like, had like 600 strong. The app was growing. So then God woke me up in the middle of the night. He said, do the Facebook group. Then it's free. Do the Facebook group. So now we have about 300 women on a Facebook group. Um, I think it's some men on there too. So we got the pray to slay group, but I was just getting discouraged. I just was getting discouraged. Cause I'm like, I, I'm a woman that I want to see people win. I feel the presence of the Holy spirit. I'm never that woman that sits back and because of things aren't going on in my life that I feel bitter or I'm stressed out or don't want to encourage or, or, um, you know, give another woman or man their dues. Like when my husband died, y'all, I thought I was going to be married, even though we had a lot of issues and I talk about it in my book. Um, you know, I thought we was going to be together for, for forever, you know, and when he died, you know, my heart was destroyed. But when I seen other women and men, you know, 
in their relationships, I'm the first one to post like, yes, many years, you know, that's just who I am. And I just feel like I, I, sometimes I just feel like I can't catch a break, but that doesn't mean that I withdraw. That doesn't mean that I stop. That means that you're onto something and you keep moving forward. You know, when you listen, um, why I love direct marketing, because when I was in direct marketing, it just teaches you to shift your mindset. Okay, self-development. And I'm very big on self-development. And in, and in the Christian world, self-development, this is self-development. Reading your word and renewing your mind because everything that they teach you in self-development um, um, classes and seminars is the same principles. I tell y'all all the time, the world uses the same principles that the Bible does. So when I renew my mind, and and, and, and and I know that I'm powerful, then you should expect some hindrance. And this is why I had to bring this forth. You should expect the enemy to come because what does he come to kill, steal, and destroy? So he wants to derail you. And what happens is a lot of us get caught up. We get caught up when the adversary comes and he's doing his job. And instead of trusting God, instead of us saying, God, if you brought me to this, you brought me to this, then I know I know in my heart that I'm going to keep, that I'm going to, um, you know, see harvest. And, and, and we forget when we read, when we read in scriptures, it took Abraham years. It took um, David years. It took Joseph years. It was not overnight. It was not overnight. In fact, um, to be honest, it was the seeds that they sow and then their children end up, you know, their children receive overnight um, sometimes tenfold. It said um, when Isaac, when he sowed, he got a hundredfold, you know, right back. Why? Because his parents was diligent. Sometimes you might not even, oh, this is a word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it might not be for you. It might be for your lineage. And then that's where it comes to, to question your why. Are you doing it from a selfish standpoint or are you doing this for your children's children? So so I know that I'm sowing seeds and if I'm, if it might not manifest in my life the way that I want it, but it'll pour down on my children. Come on, somebody. And we get discouraged. We get discouraged. You know how many people are telling me, go back to the medical field. Go back to drawing blood. Go back to doing what you know that you're good at, what you know that's going to create a residual. And I'm like, why when people are telling me that when you have your own book and you have ebook, that's, that's a residual. You have your own t-shirt line. You have a growing following and you're teaching the word of God. Why should I give up on that? And why should I, why should I live in doubt? James 1 says, if you live in doubt, James 1 and 2 says, when you pray and you doubt, don't, don't think that you're going to expect anything. The whole covenant is faith. So why should I, why should I backpedal when God called me to something? Some of us, God has called us to be millionaires. God has called us to be entrepreneurs. God has called us to be evangelists, ministers, and because it's hard, you want to pull out your hair and you want to fold. And I came to tell you, do not fold. It's going to manifest everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It will come back tenfold. A God is not a God that he should be mocked. I'm telling you, when he called my husband home, I said to myself, I have two sons and one daughter. I said, okay, Caitlin will be all right because I know how to be a woman, but I know an idea of what I feel a man should be like, but how can I teach my sons to be strong and mighty men for the Lord? And by the grace of God, they're strong and mighty men. They're great in athletics. They're smart and they and they love me and they love people because I trust on God and he has manifested some things in my life. Some of us are looking for the tangible all the time. I tell you all the time, I'm living like a millionaire and my bank account does not say so. Some of us, some of us, the blessings is just adding on the days. The blessings is just you're not being sick no more. The blessings is just you're having peace in the atmosphere. God will work it out. Look at all these people that had these great bank accounts and they were relying on their bank accounts and they were relying on their job. And now because of the government shutdown, they have nothing within what, almost two months? God is trying to show us that he still sit on the throne and that you need him. You need him. Amen. So though I see things happening 
go. I see, you know, I might not be doing the numbers that I'm doing. But again, I have to look back at my why. When God told me to write the book, that was his idea he placed in me. My idea and my and what I wanted to do, and, and it really isn't mine because he placed that inside me too, was I wanted to bring forth the word. I wanted to show women that you can go through all hell, that you can go through things, and that you can make it on the other side. That was my whole being. And then he tells me to write a book and tells me to start a business and I'm going to let that consume me. No, I'm going to trust you. Like I've been trusting you for all these years that you have called my husband home and I have made it. We sit and we get caught up. We get caught up with distractions and you don't realize there's a quote that says you don't realize you're being distracted to the distraction distracts you. Amen. And we get caught up. We get caught up. First of all, when you're living for Christ and you're resting under the new covenant, okay, the new testament, the new covenant is about resting in his doing. It's about faith. I'm not saying that you're supposed to be dormant and, and, and just don't do nothing, but I'm saying that you sow those seeds, that you do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, and then you sit patiently and you wait for him. I told y'all um, last week, let me see if I have it here in my notes. I had um, defined patient, right? Patiently. And it says, in a way that shows tolerance of delays, problems or sufferings without being annoyed or anxious. So when God says to wait patiently on him, he's saying, listen. And he said, listen, be tolerant in a way of delay problems or sufferings without becoming annoyed or anxious. So what is God saying? Don't become annoyed. Don't become anxious. Don't be anxious for nothing. Pray with supplication and no, I don't care what the world is telling you that oh, all y'all do is pray, all y'all do is pray. But look at a person who truly loves God life and look at a person who is in the world. No matter what that person that that um going through that loves God, there's a peace there, there's a grace there. And then you look at the person that thinks that they, they're living off of self-righteousness and self-will, they're always anxious, they're on, and I'm not trying to be funny because I believe in medications, but some medications are not needed. There are all these, um, you know, antidepressants and all these other things, and they're stressed out to the max. They're not happy. Their children are not getting a hundred percent of them. Why? Because they're carrying burdens that you're, that you're not designed to carry. We're not designed to carry these burdens. That's why when stress hits, your hair falls out, your body gives out on you, your your your, your temperament is up and down because you're holding on to something that you're not designed to hold on to. So when he says to give it to me, he means that. He means that. Relationships, everything. And another thing, before I get into the scripture, what I notice is we trust God for everything under the sun except our finances. We'll trust God on healing. We'll trust God on our relationships with our men. We'll trust God on um, with our children. But when it comes down to finances, we don't trust God. When it comes down to ministers that talk about finances, we say that they the devil and they just want our money. We feel like pastors can't live a luxury life. We feel like church people are supposed to be broke. And that is demonic. That is from the devil. We are not supposed to be broke. We are not supposed to be living from paycheck to paycheck. We are not supposed to be beat up and disgusted. But we have conditioned our minds to feel like that's how we're supposed to live when and the bible says to expect the good thing he's and john he says i come to give you life and give it no um john he said i come that your soul i come that you prosper and your soul prospers so he broke it down he divided it he said you prosper you prosper that's your wealth that's your children that's your mind and then he said your soul that's your spiritual being so what was he saying he's saying that i want your spiritual being to prosper and i want you to prosper in the natural realm here on earth but what happens Soon as something happens, soon as something feels like, you know, it's stagnating us, we say, oh, that's the devil. Oh, it's not God's will. We are quick to say something is not God's will. We are quick to look at adversity and say, you know what? This is God saying we're not, you're not supposed to do that. And that means that you have not awakening the discernment in you. That means that you need to get back to the basics and you need to pray for discernment. Because my Bible says that the Holy Spirit leads you and the Holy Spirit will whisper in your ear, don't go that way. I talk about it in my book when I was messing with that guy. The Holy Spirit said, he's lying to you. 
But it's easier to say, you know what, when adversity comes, I'm going to give up. This is not God's will for me. It's easier to do that way because it's harder to be uncomfortable. The truth is, the people that you see that are financially set, the people that you see that are are, are, are growing um spiritually, they have learned to live being uncomfortable. They have learned the power of the art of waiting and knowing that with they the, the manifestations are in the uncomfortable realm. You cannot be comfortable and grow. Think about people who grow their hair when the girls do the big chop. It's uncomfortable for that moment when they walk around with that short haircut. It's uncomfortable. But after a while, they hear the follicles and their hair start to grow and it's looming. It's uncomfortable right now how I'm living. But I know this is what God called me to do. I know that when I read books, and, and I, and I want to I wanna encourage you and challenge you to read, y'all, the things that I know now. Oh, man, I wish I knew them in my 20s. But it's okay. It's okay. But you learn different things when you're reading from people that are doing things that you wanted to do. And you notice that you just see, you just see the revealing. You don't see the backstories. You don't see the times that they didn't have nothing to eat. You don't see the times when people were bashing them and the devil was throwing people at them, lying on them and deceiving them. You don't see the bad business deals. You don't see that their children are sick. Or, or like look at T.D. Jakes on the rise of his coming up. His 13-year-old baby uh, um, was having a baby and got pregnant. Then the other one, they were saying there was you know rumors with homosexuality and all this other stuff with his son. You don't see these things. You don't see that Joyce Meyer that people were coming at her and saying all these things about her. You don't see that when God told me to preach my sister's uh, funeral, you don't see that my car, my truck, I bought that truck brand new. I never had issues with that truck. All of a sudden, my truck gets st um, stuck in Brooklyn and I have to get my, 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 my truck told that my daughter had freaking uh, um, symptoms of a stroke and I was sitting in the hospital with my daughter because she had a stroke. You don't see these things. You don't see these things. So you come on and you say that girl is strong. You say that girl this and that, but you don't know what I go through behind the scenes. You don't know what it takes to come on and feed y'all. You don't know what it takes. But then when you're going through something, you just want to give up. You want to give up. You want to give up and you want to go to be a mediocre and then with somebody that doesn't give up, you want to hate on them. You don't want to support them because you and your feelings. But the truth of the matter is they kept going. They kept going. They kept going. I'm in too deep. The whole world is telling me, girl, give up, girl, do this. And I'm like, no, why? When I know this is my calling. No. No, I make it do what it do, and I'll keep on pressing. As long as my children are good, and we go through, and they be like, when I be like, you know what, I'm quitting, I'm going back to work, this, and the third, and my children be like, did God tell you to do that? Did God say that? That's why you got to check your team sometime. Who are you around? Me and my children, we on one accord, baby. You, some of you are sleeping with the enemy. Some of you are married to people that God did not design for you to be married to. Let's keep, like, like, like let's keep it real now. Let's keep it real now. And because you're scared to let go, you're enduring some things and you are not allowing it to derail your future. I'm not letting nothing derail me. I'm telling you, I pray the slay is going to be on every woman. I'm dropping some shirts for the guy. It's going to be on every guy. My books are going to be everywhere. I'm telling you what I know. My ministry is growing. Lives are being changed as we speak. People call me. There's people that wanted to kill themselves. People that just didn't know what they wanted to do. And because of my ministry, uh, and it might not be orthodox, and it might not be traditional, we out here winning. So why would I stop? Why would I stop? Why would I stop? Because finances are not aligning sometimes. Because of my family are talking about me and hating on me. Because of my friends that I thought was my friends, they're not supporting me. No, then that means you, that means your why is for everybody else. Your why wasn't for you. Your why is selfish. Your why is because you're trying to stunt on everybody. I know that I'm not trying to stunt. I know that this, this is what I'm doing. This is for the people. This is not for me. This is for the people. This is for my daughters. This is for my sons. This is for their children. 
This is for the women that came from the hood and felt like they couldn't make nothing out they so. I came and I did it with a GED. I did it as a teenage mom. I did it as a, as a widow. You think I wasn't hurt when my sister got shot in her head? Especially by people that I watched grow up. And then God told me to preach that. My mother laid on that couch. I was 13 years old. It was me and my mama when she gave birth to that baby. I was right there when she pushed out. And I helped her. And, that, and we delivered China on the couch. You think it was easy? You think I'm gonna you think I'm gonna keep complaining and saying the white man this and the white man that when God gives you opportunities? Let me tell you something. You guys get income tax check. Most people who have children get over ten thousand dollars. If if you put you say five years, that's fifty thousand dollars. You could have invested that. You still work, but we act like we're not used to nothing and we go spinning and then we look stupid. And me too. That's why when I birthed Alabama Birth Publishing, I did it. I was working nights. I did it on my night job, and I used that income tax that I got that year because I have not received income tax. Now I have to pay taxes because of the business. But there's, you, we make too many excuses is what I'm saying. You can invest that money. You can buy a house. But we want to keep, we want to keep making excuses. And then we want to go find people who are going to sit there and, 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 and sugarcoat with us and, and, and comfort our excuses. Let me tell you something. The Pray to Slay movement, we're not doing that. We're not making excuses. We're not doing that. I told my baby when she was sick, yes, it's unfortunate, KK, that you sick and you going through it. But you know what? You're going to pick yourself up. You smart. And that baby, I remember it was a time she missed 30 days, y'all, and she still came back to school, winning, passing everything. She graduated um, high school with honors and got scholarships and now in a, in a private um, college. You hear what I'm telling you? So this don't just start with y'all. I'm not out here faking the front. In, my, in the quiet place, in the dark. In the dark, I'm winning. You want to keep looking at people and think because they got a big following and think because they showing all these cars and these things and y'all want to think they winning. Look at Kate Spade, baby. That woman blew her head out. Uh, uh, suicide, I don't know how she did it. Excuse me. I don't know how she did it. But I know she committed suicide. And to the world... She had a husband. She had a, a million dollar business. Y'all would say that's winning, right? Y'all caught up in the hype. It's too many people caught up in the hype. You caught up in the hype. So now we got people that's caught up in the hype. Then we got people that wanna that that don't want to reach for the stars, don't want to do something different. You feel like everybody else could do it but you. Why? I feel good when I sit because I went from who you sleeping with to what you do. I went from hanging out to socializing. So now when I go to events, they be like, and I used to, because you know I'm from the hood, so I used to be like, why are they all up in my business not realizing it's a different mindset now. It's a different ball game. So when I go to these events and stuff, they, what you do? What you do? You know, what you invested in? And I feel good now. I'm an author. I'm a published author. I minister. I steward beautiful children that's out here killing it right now. Not who I'm sleeping with. Not, not being in so-and-so business. I don't care what so-and-so is doing. I don't care what so-and-so is doing. I watched my husband die and had, and had hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank and, 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 and safe that I didn't even get. That people stole from me. But thank God I was married to the man and I was able to sue. I talk about that in my book. I was able to sue who killed him. I'm not into that street stuff. I don't care what somebody else is doing. I've seen how quick my life changed and I want to leave my kids with something. I created, I created residual income. So now there's times I'm sleeping and people are buying my book. I have ebook. That's residual income. A growing ministry, that's a brand registered and incorporated my business. That's the incorporation. I don't have time to be worrying about what somebody else is doing. And I don't have time to be worrying about what somebody thinks of me. Because when God calls you into a different realm now, now I don't have a steady check like I have. 
So I got to worry about how these lights is getting paid, how we eating, how I'm paying my life insurance. It's a different ball game now. Why? Because I wasn't afraid. And I'm not afraid to be different. You don't think it take a lot to come on on here, especially when it's Facebook, like Instagram that I got so many different people following, but on my Facebook platform, there's a lot of people that I grew up and stuff with. They know the old me. You don't think it's hard? But I know that their souls are perishing. I know that I have this peace that surpasses all understanding. And I'm like, yo, I want to share this peace. I want to share this peace. Some of you are so hardcore in the streets. In the streets, y'all fight everything. In the streets, y'all pick up a gun. Y'all do this and that. But in the spiritual realm, we're punks. We quit the old God is too hard. I'm giving up. And that includes me too. There's a lot of times that I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. And I'm like, you know, when you was in the streets, you found the way. My God. I did not come to play. When I come and I push through and I do these lives and I push through and I host these conferences. I don't, it's not, it's not even about me. I mean, my first conference, I did it for like $10. The jewels and the wisdom that God has given me, just the things that I have been through in life alone and didn't go crazy. I should be selling those, those tickets for, for guap. But I'm like, I know people are lost, especially, especially, and not even just in the hood, in the suburbs too. I learned a lot living out here in the suburbs. These people have these beautiful homes and white picket fences and they're, uh, and they're uh, on all types of drugs and stuff because they're so not happy. They just have a void and they don't know why. I know that people are perishing. So I say, you know what, God? I don't care what other people are saying. See, other people have not did or are or, or doing what I'm trying to do. So I hold on to the people that have done what I'm trying to do or doing. And they say, foul, this is what it looks like behind the scenes. This is the norm. What you are experiencing behind the scenes, foul, is the norm. This is the norm. This is the norm for entrepreneurs. This is the norm for spiritual leaders. This is the norm, the norm for leadership. This is the norm. Just don't give up. They all say the same thing. Just don't give up. But then I talk to somebody. That's why you got to be careful who you get your, your, your information from. I talk to somebody that's living mediocre, that has not done what I'm doing or trying to do. And they like, uh-uh, girl. Girl, you got... Get you a job, you got to play it safe, da, 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 da. And I'm like, yo, for two years now, for two years I've been a full-time entrepreneur. And you still going to have shaky faith and you see God carrying you for two years, every holiday, every uh, every birthday, these children get what they're supposed to get. They're still enjoying their life. I may don't um, go shopping as much as I, as, I, as I wanted to, but guess what? That's a liability. I learned by reading my books from assets and liabilities. I posted yesterday that I cleaned out my closet and I got thousands of, thousands of dollars worth of bags. It ain't none of that in my bank account. That ain't fly. And that's what y'all thinking is fly? That's not fly. All those expensive shoes, that, that's not fly. And in order for me to make money off, off of that, I would have to sell that. It's time, to, it's time to change our mindset. I'm not worried about what the government shutdown is doing. I'm not worried about that. I'm really not. Because I know in my heart that I serve a God that's going to see what he started on me. He's going to see it be finished. Whatever it takes. Even if it's times that it looks like I'm losing everything, I'm not losing everything. Because I know in my heart he will give it back tenfold. 
When they was in the lion's den, hello, they was in the lion's den. I said it yesterday, but the lions did not consume them. They was in the furnace, but no matter how hot they put it on, there was an angel in there protecting them. They walked through the wilderness. They feet did not callous. I've been through hell and back. I don't look 36. And I'm not trying to be vain. I know I don't look 36. Even without the makeup, I don't look 36. Restoration in my soul. I have a peace. You can't buy this peace. In fact, people are envious of me because of this peace that I have. Even in my own family. Even people that should be supporting me and bigging me up secretly can't stand me because of my strength. That's their problem. I pray for them and keep it moving. I did not come to play. This is serious business. Being about your father's business is serious business. Witches and warlocks come after me. I had people come and trying to do hex over my, over my head and all types of crazy stuff. You don't know the spiritual warfare that I go through. This walk ain't for the faint. And that's the same thing with entrepreneurship. That's the same thing for people who want degrees, people who are trying to become RN. Those classes ain't easy. It's not easy. But you're going to retreat because it's because it's not easy. Some of you, some of you put more hope in your raggedy relationships than you do with your own successful goals, self-developmental goals. You believe in this dude and this woman who has cheated on you, or this woman who has made you feel less than a man. You'll keep believing in her, but you'll give up on God real quick. Real quick, give up on God. Real quick. Oh, the G that Jesus stuff, that ain't real. That ain't real. Oh, direct marketing, that ain't real. How it's not real? I know personally people that has been, that's multi-millionaires off of direct marketing. Why? Because you can't sell something? Oh, she wrote that book, but that, that it wasn't easy writing the book and doing the, doing the stuff so I can have it published and get the barcode and all this other stuff. And then people want to hit me up and they want me to give them all of this stuff, this knowledge that I accumulated for free. No, I'm done with that. Pay me. It's called consultation. I know my worth now. Certain things I'll do for free, I'll sit here and I'll and I, and I spread the word for free. Because you don't put a price on the gospel. But when it comes to my business, my shirts and stuff, I'm not doing that. I thought about it the other day. One of my homegirls asked me for my print information and I gave it up to her. And I'm like, she not giving nobody her information about her vendor where she sell her makeup. She would not tell me where her, who her vendor is. What's wrong with you, Fab? Gotta change the mindset. I don't go around begging no more. Unless times is real hard, I'll call my homegirl. It's like, yo, I'm, you know, I'm really messed up. And now I told myself, I'm not, I'm not even doing that no more. Because I serve a God. If you can't come through for me, then you're a liar. If he can't come through, if he said to do this and go this route, and he don't come through, then you're a liar. And God is not a God that he should be mocked or a liar. But the thing is, we're not utilizing our faith. We're not trusting him. I want to give you the scripture and then I'm out. So I was reading in um, Genesis 26. I'm just going to be like one or two and then I'll break it down to you. This is coming from the New King James Version. All right, let's go to verse 17. So basically the backdrop is Isaac is the seed of Abraham and Isaac is out here winning. I mean, everywhere he goes, he's accumulating wealth. He's winning. And the last place he was at, excuse me, they were jealous because of that he was winning. And they was like, you got to get out of here. You, you getting too strong, too powerful for us in our, own, in our hometown. You got all this money, which was like cattle and stuff like that back then and livestock. And you got all these servants. You got to go. So he bounces. Verse 17. Then Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells of waters which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by names which his father had called them. 
Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerel quarreled with Isaac, herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. So how many of you guys know hater? Everything that I was just talking about. So now you you on your way. Now you 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 doing everything that God has told you to do. You go in the way that God has told you to come. Now all of a sudden here come people quarreling with you over things, over opportunities that you're founded. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called this name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. I want to stop right there. Did it say that he dug the well and he quit it? Did it say that he dug the well and he retreated and said, you know what, I, I give up. I'm just going back to the country that I know is, you know, that I can just be living great. No. It said he dug the well and they came and he crowed. He said, all right, some of you are trying to keep fighting these battles, trying to show people that you can argue and you can fight and you strong. He gave it up. He said, all right, that's me. When obstacles come, I said, all right, all right. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to try another route. I'm going to use the same thing, but I'm going to try another route. He said, all right. He kept pushing. Then he dug another well. Crowed over it. He knew that well was his. He knew it was his father's. He said, all right. He already knew he, they was haters. You already know that you have an adversary that's looking, roaming around like a lion to devour you. You already know. You already know. That's his job, to derail you, to kill, steal, and destroy. You already know these things. So why get all antsy about it? Why not keep going? Why not keep digging? That's why I titled this Keep Digging. He kept digging. And then finally, because God said, all right, I like where your mind is. God said, you can have that one. So you got to realize everything is a appointed time. Some of us are so caught up because we have become a generation of a microwave. We want everything fast and we forget that everything is a process. It was a process for me to stop smoking weed. It was a process, a process for me to stop indulging in sexual activities. It was a process for me to stop cursing. It was a process to me to grow spiritually that I can come forth and give, and give lives and do recordings and that I know what I'm talking about. It's a process. But some of you don't want to go through the process. You want somebody else to do the work and then you want to come along. No, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. Not to win. Not to win for, for a, a lifetime for your children's and children. See, when you keep dugging, this type of perseverance not only lasts for you, but it lasts for you and your children's children. You don't want nothing quick. So I just came on today to tell you Keep digging. I'm going to keep digging, baby. Before you know it, you guys are going to be like, wow. Look at foul. Look at foul, God. Look at foul. Look what God is doing for her. But it took a lot of Oh, man, that poor thing. Look at all that she's been through. Oh, man, look at that. Took a lot of those to get to the point where you can be like, look at foul. It's going to take a lot of why. Why me? Why I got to go through this? But, Lord, you know, though you slay me, I still trust you, God. I trust you. Some of you got to keep saying that every day. Every day I keep saying, I say, God, I know you ain't bring me this far to leave me. I know you got me, God. I don't know how these bills going to get done. I don't know. I didn't know, I didn't sell a bunch of books. I didn't know how those kids was going to get Christmas, but they got it. They got everything they wanted. I don't know how I, I you know, still make it through to live out here in the suburbs, but I, I, God makes a way. And I don't, I don't stress over what I can't do. Because you told me to rest in you. So I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust you. You lead, I follow. I had to slow down with the social media. You know, sometimes when I'm bored, 
I'll go on and I'll be scrolling through Instagram and everything, but I had to scroll down through that because I have some nice little wins that I felt like that I accomplished. And then I'll get on and I'll see what somebody else is doing. And I'm like, oh man, like they had, they winning, man. And then now I'm feeling like I'm not winning and you are winning, fam. And you, you are winning. You who watching, you are winning. Just the fact that you on this live and you listening to what I'm saying, it, it tells where your mind state is. It tells what you trying to do with your life. You could be watching something talking about the latest gossip. You could be watching something that's not uh, um, planting a seed in you. But you're watching something that's stimulating your mind. That's all I got. I'm about to do uh, my, my um, I have a thing I have to do for YouTube right now. Listen, I have over a thousand um, people on here. I'm trying to get to a thousand people on my YouTube so I can start getting my ads. You know, being that I'm home, you know, I need to find income. So if I'm blessing you guys, you know, sow a seed. It takes nothing to subscribe. Go to YouTube. It's, I have Fallon Brown, and then I have the Brown Mac family. The Brown Mac family's our vlogging channels. The, the videos are dope. It's fun. A lot of my teachings that I do in here, all of the teachings are under Fallon Brown. Go to my Instagram, Falgard. Go to FallonBrownPublishing.com. Uh, the link is in your description. You, Some of you guys, you want to sow a seed on the word? Sow a seed. There's a donation button here. Some of you guys have not even, not even cop the book yet. But y'all got $15 for everything else. Invest in yourself. Cop the book. The t-shirts is bomb. I haven't seen the t-shirt that look as good as mine's yet. Cop a shirt. Support. You quick to support all these people you don't know. Support. And guess what? If you don't support, it's all right. I'm still going to grow. <laughs> I'm still going to eat. And I'm still going to come and minister to you. Because that's what I was uh, put here to do. To minister. There was a time where I really, when I was like support, I was like, oh my God, I need they support. No, I'm, I'm going to tell you to support. And if you don't, I know there's a flock for me. I know what my book is doing. I know that I'm going to be all right. And that's the mind frame that you guys have to have too. And you have to know, yes, there is a devil looking to devour you. Rebuke him, resist him, and keep it moving. Don't give him no room. And when I say, when I mean, when, when I say, when I, what I mean when I say, don't give him no room. Remove bitterness. Remove jealousy. Remove envious. Remove strife. Remove all of that things. Remove negative thinking. Remove, remove negative talking. Don't give him no room. Depression comes from negative thinking, because a person that is in a happy state, not a phony happy, but a real happy state. They're not depressed. They're not depressed. But it's the people that are continuously replaying negative thoughts. I'm not good enough. I did this. That's condemnation. That's why you're depressed. But a person that says, you know what? I messed up. I, God, you said that as soon as I repent, you put it in the sea of forgetfulness. That's what it is. I'm going to move on. And I'm going to enjoy today. I enjoy my moment. Yes, I, I, I try to do things for the prudent. Prudent means the future, making smart moves for the future. I try to be a prudent woman and sow seeds for the future. But for the most part, I enjoy today because I, I can go out there today, God forbid, and that could be it. So I enjoy the moment. I enjoy the now. God says that you should say, Lord's willing. The Bible says that it's kind of cocky of you to say, I'm going to do this tomorrow and I'm going to do this tomorrow. For he said, for you don't even know what tomorrow holds. Amen. So I pray that this, that this blessed you guys. We covered a lot. Some of you who are just getting on, I want to tell you to rewind it. It will bless you. I want you guys to um, share this. Let's start sharing something that's going to encourage and, and cultivate our people. We quick to share fights. We quick to share stupid gossip stuff. All these other things that's not benefiting us nothing. We share that with the quickness. I don't want no praises. I don't want nobody tagging me, telling me I'm the bomb and telling me, oh, I'm good this, I'm good that. Don't stroke my ego because just as quick as man to praise you, man to freaking uh, disown you. 
But share this. You want to honor what I'm trying to do? Share this. Share this thing. Because this will bless somebody. Amen? Pray to slay, guys. Love y'all. Bye.